Welcome everybody to another episode of Latif's Inspired. Today I'm going to do a fantastic recipe for you guys. This is a, a dish that I cook at home for my mum and she absolutely adores it. It's, I've, I keep it very simple because home cooking is nice and simple but it's packed full of flavour for you guys to follow this uh, amazing recipe. As I said it's a family favourite and this is going to be cooked with mutton. Now mutton is not very easy to find if you go to the supermarkets it's mainly lamb and beef and so on but if you go to the Asian and I went to the Asian Bangladeshi supermarket and they had a loads of mutton and then the prices were fantastic. So today, if you watch the vlog till the end, I'll be going to the supermarket, purchasing it, telling you the prices and bringing it back and cooking this wonderful dish for you guys to enjoy. So hopefully let me crack on and do this fantastic recipe for you guys. As you can see, this is the Zaman Brothers in London's Brick Lane supermarket. This is the Asian supermarket run by Bengali uh, owners. Let's check it out. Assalamu alaikum. So the shop, as you can see, they're getting ready for Ramadan. And when you go, when when it's ready for Ramadan, you get all of these mainly people eating chickpeas and so on and rices and look at all the meats and chicken and everything. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you the sheer size of this mutton. The baby lamb is obviously much smaller. It's more tender, more fatty, more flavoursome. Uh, so I wouldn't say flavoursome. Mutton and lamb is totally different. Bengali households prefer the mutton. So today I'm going to show you this massive mutton which I buy. Right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going for the mutton, a whole large mutton is about 40 kg. A medium mutton is between 25 to about 35 kg. This one is 27 kg. I'm going to show you the size of this. Right, as you can see, the sheer size of this is enormous. So what the butcher's going to do is going to cut it for me, and I'm going to go. Through, I'm going to go through some of the prices on this. So the local butcher, very friendly. If you guys are coming to London's Brick Lane and coming to this store after watching this vlog, I'm uh, his name is Shelly Muddin and hopefully he'll be helping you and assisting to what you uh, want. So today we're going to be talking about the mutton. So the, if you buy a whole mutton, uh, how many? How much is a kg? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I'm very clean. I'm not going to say much. Alhamdulillah, the whole sheep, amra mutton, is 3.99 per kg. So when he's selling the mutton, he sells it for 3.99 per kg. But if you were to come into the store and buy one kg, how much pay some? One kg is uh, three ninety nine. Uh, whole. No, 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 no. Whole and uh, look, three ninety nine kg. Uh, I'm using aya khalija se kg lo ekhoto. Six uh, six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. So as as uh, as you've heard, if you buy the whole mutton or half of the mutton, it's three ninety nine per kg, which is a phenomenal, almost fifty percent off. But if you were to buy, if you come in and want to buy loose, one kg, two kg, it's 6.99 kg. 6.99 kg, which is very reasonable. Now let's compare it to the lamb. How much is a whole whole lamb? Whole so lamb is 6.99 per, per kg, kg, whole lamb. Whole lamb. And and one kg, 8.99 per kg. So again, it's a fantastic price. If you buy in a whole of the lamb or half of the lamb, there's, it's 6 99 per kg. But if you come in and want to buy it loose, just one kg or two kg, it will cost you 8 99 Yes. 8 99 which is actually a very, very, very good price for you compared to the local supermarkets. And as you can see, it's fresh as a, day, <laughs> fresh as a daisy. And um, I mean, the meats, how you want it, what cuts you want it. If you want to get the lamb chops, the back chops, the ribs, whatever you wish ask the butcher who would do it for you so what we're going to do now i just compared the lamb and the mutton and the dish that i'm going to be cooking is a very authentic bangladeshi style mutton curry which i'm going to be using this but i thought i'll buy the whole uh, mutton because it's much cheaper for me 
and um, I've got a massive chest freezer hopefully we can stick it there for the whole family to enjoy it obviously Ramadan is coming so right we're gonna see the butcher in action Right ladies and gentlemen, so what he's done, he's separated all the leg meat and all the ribs and everything. So you've got a nice mix for the curries. So he's mixed all that for you, all the bones and everything in there. Now this is the rib chops. These cooks fantastic curries and some more lamb chops and back chops, everything mixed together. So he separated the chops from all the mixed meats looks wonderful and this is the mince lamb sorry mink, mix, mince mutton from this whole sheep absolutely gorgeous looks wonderful meat lovely color i saw it's nice and fresh and here you go so you can buy the dissected mutton you can buy the mutton mince if you want you can get a mixed with the bones and everything. By sub, how much is the meat with the bones? How much is it per kg? This one per kg, uh, 6.99. So that's if you're buying it individually, 6.99 per kg. If you're buying the mutton mince, the how mutton much? Is, uh, 5.50 kg. Five pound 50 per kg. And if you're getting the chops? 7.99 kg. Seven pounds 99 per kg. There you go. So fantastic prices at Zaman Brothers. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back in the kitchen. I had a fantastic time at the supermarket. Really friendly guys. And I got some lovely mutton. Look at that. Lovely color, very nice. Uh, not too fatty. Some mutton can be over fatty. So I told a butcher, uh, give me a meat that is not too fatty. So hopefully this looks nice and hopefully we're gonna have an amazing dish. So got your usual suspects, the uh, spice tray. And I'm gonna use uh, quite a lot of garlic in this dish. Um, I love the flavour of garlic, so about two teaspoons and a bit of ginger. Now, you know, as I love my tomatoes, I'm going to be using, using these vine ripe tomatoes. These are absolutely gorgeous and it's still a bit hard. So you've got that, that flavour in that packed into that tomato. Using these garam masala, loads of chilies. I'm going to use a green pepper and this is a one and a half onion. I don't want, it's because one kg of meat, I do not want it to be a very thick sauce. Um, but a gravy like kind of sauce. So I'm gonna cook it like a gravy method. So if you watch to the end, you're gonna have a fantastic mutton curry. Bismillah. So I've got my nice dish on and to start cooking, two, tab uh, two tablespoons that was, that's four tablespoons of oil. You're gonna, uh, you're gonna have a lot of fat coming out from the meat, so you don't wanna add too much oil. So the dish should be fantastic. Right, this is Bangladeshi Garam Masala, which is the punch prawn. You can get that from Asian supermarkets. Basically, it's got the nigella seeds, the fennel seeds, the methi seeds. It's very nice and very flavoursome when you add it to the curry. So add it beginning to the oil, let the oil do its magic. And uh, this is the Garam Masala, which I'll be using. So two Bangladeshi bay leaf, uh, which is the tezpata. Uh, this is the cinnamon, the cassia bark. So there's about three pieces of that. And a half a teaspoon of peppercorn. This feels a lovely flavor and about five uh, cardamom and I've uh, got about six cloves in there. So the cloves got a lovely peppery sort of flavor. Very nice. That goes in, it's toasting away. It smells very fragrant. Now I'm adding the onions and the green peppers. Right, so I just fried the garam masala for about a minute or two. Then I've added these um, onions. I made nice thick slices. Same with the peppers, nice thick slices. And what's gonna happen is this is gonna be like when we cook the Indian style base gravy, it's just gonna all sort of become mushy and uh, become a lovely gravy. So I'm adding about eight to 10 green chilies. This is gonna do the phenomenal flavor. And with that, I'm adding two tablespoons of uh, garlic and one tablespoon of ginger. That goes in. At this point, my lovely mutton 
So if you don't, if you can't get mutton, you can use the lamb. But if you want a traditional mutton curry, Bengali household style, this is how we do it. I'm not adding any water at this point because I want the liquid from the meat to come out. And make sure the gas is on a sort of medium low at this point. And we're just using the oil and the heat to draw out all the moisture from the meat and the onions. And after mixing it for a while, let the meat sort of change its colour a bit and I'm going to be adding the salt. Let all the garlic and ginger and everything fry in this, in this oil and let the natural liquid come from the mutton at release. Right, as you can see, some of this meat is changing in colour. It's releasing some lovely natural liquids and the caramelisation of the onions and peppers and the ginger and garlic and the garam masala is working. The reason why I've used a fair bit of garam masala as uh, meat has a funny smell to it. So when you use a lot of garam masala in meat dishes, it brings out the flavour and that nice pungent sweet sort of flavour as well as the fragrance. So now I'm going to add some salt this so this is one teaspoon one kg i normally add two teaspoons of salt so that's what i'm going to do the salt to taste you can add more or less if you're worried about the salt content add one and a half teaspoon and then you can always add a bit later but i wouldn't recommend no more than two teaspoons ladies and gentlemen and basically it's the salt and the chili powder that gives it the flavor if you get it right you're going to have a fantastic uh, phenomenal flavor flavorful dish so make sure you get the salt right and the spices. Right ladies and gentlemen, total cooking time, it's been about five minutes to get it to this stage. And if you can see the liquid coming out of the meat, I put no water in. So this is the natural uh, liquid from the vegetables, the onions and the meat. So, so this has a, it creates a nice little browning on the meat as well. Uh, but not to that sort of fried effect but yeah this is how I cook it at home and you're gonna have a very home style Bangladeshi mutton curry right I'm gonna show you something now right I'm gonna be using these lovely vine tomatoes and uh, what I'm doing to this curry I'm gonna create a lovely thick gravy and if you use tomatoes um, it does a similar job to an onion, it creates a nice little thick sauce. So I'm going to show you a little technique which I personally enjoy. So basically cut your tomatoes in half. There you go. And these are some plump, luscious, red, um, ripe tomatoes. So basically cut the little eye off all these tomatoes. And then just slightly, just give it a little slip there like that. So there you go. So you cut it into a little half over there. So what's going to happen is when we add it to the curry, it's going to create a lovely steam and the, it's going to, the, we're going to peel the skin off. And when you put the skin off, we're going to use the tomato, creating a nice little pop and it's going to be a phenomenal gravy. Now let's add it to the curry. So the tomatoes, I'll put it like this. If you're wondering, there might be too many tomatoes, but when I make my base gravy, I add a fair bit of tomatoes. And this cup, this dish is gonna be very, very flavorful, I promise you. So whack a lid back on, and we're gonna come back to it in about five minutes. The gas is on a sort of um, medium. So I can see the steam just generating here. So we'll come back in five minutes. Right, the tomatoes been in there for a good, Eight to ten minutes as you can see the steam is creating a nice little opening there now we're gonna just take off the tomato skin be very careful use a tongue I'm using my fingers there you go just like this wonderful there you go and I'll do the to the rest of it Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're wondering why the heck uh, am I doing all this hard work, I could have just whack it in a blender and put it in like a tomato pulp. You can do that, but I find this way 
it just brings out the lovely flavours and it just comes today, it just mushes up. As they say, natural is always the best. So there you go. And this is going to create a lovely gravy. And I'll give it a nice little mix. Oh, look at that. The natural fat coming out from the meat. Oh, mate, look at that. This is absolutely gorgeous, I promise you. And all these uh, lovely vegetables, the tomatoes, the green peppers, the onions, is going to create a very flavorful gravy, I promise you. If you follow these, these little tips and my method, you're going to have a wonderful curry. So there you go. Now, the cooking time has been 15 minutes so far. I'm going to let this cook for a little bit more and then I'm going to add some water. So I need to soften up the meat and this process is going to... Right, the gas is still on a medium high and I'll come back to it in about 5-10 minutes. Right, la right ladies and gentlemen, it's been cooking away for about a good 20-25 minutes. Oh, look at that. That tomato, the onions, have all sort of come together. Wonderful. And you can see the natural liquid of the meat is, yep, there you go. When you see this, it's, it's coming to its shape. All that fat has sort of dissolved. So now I'm going to add a nice one mug of water. Add boiling water if preferable. And what I'm doing with that mug of water, and I'm gonna wait for this to reduce down to basically soften up the meat because the mutton isn't as uh, soft as the lamb. It needs a little bit more longer cooking time, but it's more mature and very flavorsome of the meat. So this process is gonna take a good half an hour. So whack the lid back on on a nice medium simmer. We're gonna let this cook for about half an hour and come back to it. I'm gonna show you a little tip, a nice little secret to soften up the mutton or any sort of red meat. Get yourself a couple of tablespoons of yogurt. Mix it up like this because you don't want the yogurt to split. So you must do this, you can't just whack it really cold um, yogurt onto really boiling curry. So there you go, that goes in. a nice little mix and what this is going to do is going to help the curry and the mutton soften up and also bring a lovely rich velvety flavor to it there you go so that's mixed in now remember I'm going to let this simmer for a good 45 minutes in order to get the meat nice and soft the lid back onto it and come back in about 15 minutes later before I add the spices. Right ladies and gentlemen it's been cooking away for a good 45 minutes and um, there you go that gravy come into a lovely thick sauce there you go it's coming to the point of separation of the oil and the actual gravy so I'm going to put the gas down now and I'm going to add some spices what tends to happen if the gas is too high the spices stick to, stick to the bottom of the pan, which I do not want. So let me get my spice box. Right, so I've got the usual suspects out. Now I'm using one teaspoon of turmeric, gonna give some lovely color. I want it spicy, but not too hot. So two teaspoon is gonna be medium to hot. If you're really brave and you want a vindaloo style, then you would add about six uh, teaspoons of chili powder, but I wouldn't recommend it. Right, so coming back to the spices here, uh, curry powder, one, two teaspoon of curry powder, and this is coriander powder, I'm using one and a half, and we're using cumin, just half a teaspoon of cumin, and we're gonna use a fair bit of garam masala, there you go, because it has lovely sweet pungent sort of flavors, and it's gonna build a lovely um, fragrance, which I want. So now it's going to give a very browny colour as well to the meat. 
There you go. It was quite red from before because of the tomatoes. And you can see the thickness of the gravy is almost hugging the lovely mutton pieces. So there you go, give it a nice little mix. And we're gonna boona the spices, and whenever I say boona in the spices, it's basically cooking up the spices so that raw smell goes away from it. And there you go, so give it five minutes with the spices, then I'm gonna add some water. Put the lid back on and come back to it shortly. Right, the curry has thickened up, and the, if you can see over here, there you go. That's all sort of caramelized beautifully, all the spices. And now we're gonna add some water. So this is two mugs of water, boiling hot water. That's gonna create a lovely thick sauce. And give it a nice little mix. So that was boiling water. You need to add boiling water. So give this a nice little simmer. Gas is on a sort of medium low. Put the lid back on and come back to it in about a good 15 minutes or so. Right, this is one hour cooking time. I mean, look at that, simmering away. Let me show you. Now, you want the meat to have a little bite to it. You don't want it to fall off the bone kind of thing, which will be happening. There you go. But if you do prefer, you need to cook this for probably one hour and a half like this. So there you go. This is almost ready. The cooking time has been one hour exactly. But I'm gonna cook it for a further 15, 20 minutes. Now, that was on a high, medium high. Now it's gonna be a medium low. And I want the liquid to evaporate to about half. When it's half, it's gonna be a nice thick sauce and you're gonna see redness and the oil sort of separate. That's when you know it's ready. So. Put the lid back on and come back to it in about a good 15 minutes. Right, I'm making a lovely vegetable rice with the mutton. Now let's have a look. Get the foil off. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Individual pieces of rice with the vegetables, the cumin. Voila, look at that. There you go. Beautiful rice. And we're gonna have that as a side dish to the mutton curry. Right, it's been cooking away, one hour, 15 minutes. I mean, look at that. Just admiring the curry over here. That's the natural fat from the meat and the oils that I use is separated from the meat. So you know it's cooked to perfection. Now, I always say when it's sort of custard consistency, that means the nice thick sauce, there you go, sticking to the spoon. This is gonna be absolutely gorgeous. So there you go. Now, Basically, when it's like this, in a thick sauce, this is a Buna type curry, that is done. So turn the gas off, and now I'm gonna be ready to plate up. Wonderful, beautiful dish here. Right, that's all done now. Lovely mutton curry. This is a very home style curry, what Bangladeshi households would have at home. And this is the dish that I cook for my mom and she absolutely ad adores it. Now, can you see the redness from the oil, a bit of color on the curry? This is act actually exactly how it looks at home. So I hope you follow these recipes and my tips and you're gonna have a wonderful curry. Now let's taste this. Now you can see this uh, mutton bone the marrow from it, so the flavors has come out to this lovely gravy. Look at over here, so these bones are, there you go, in, in fact, let me show you this, let me just show you this. The gelatinous, meaty uh, flavor from the meat is gonna be absolutely beautiful. Now let's get a piece of meat, meat only. So I'll pick this one. Wow, look at that, look at that. Beautiful, let's give this a taste. Smell that. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. Thick sauce, very meaty flavor, strong flavors from the mutton. Nice spice from the chili powder. Wonderful. Right, I'm gonna enjoy it with this lovely vegetable rice. And if you wanna see this, recipe put it on the comment section and I'll, I'll make a nice video out of it 
Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the tips that I've given you and you follow it like this, I said you're going to have a phenomenal dish. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe and see you soon for some more videos at Latif's Inspired. Blue, you, and I think to myself, what a wonderful world.